Let's take a look at what came in the mail today. So what I have in my hand here is something I've been pining for since 1997, folks. Um, so uh, this is probably the biggest mail call of my entire life, possibly. Um, it's just been something I've been pining for for forever, and we finally got it. So we're going to go ahead and break it out. And after I show it off, I'll uh, do a little discussion um, about the pine. Okay, here we go, folks. We have none other than Starfire 59, The Drop. Um, this uh, is the very first Starfire release to ever come out. And this is quite possibly, it's been debated, but it's quite possibly the very first Tooth and Nail release ever. Um, let's see if there's a date on this. Oh, it says copyright 94, so uh, possibly not. But there's been debate. But uh, I had heard before, though, that um, this uh, was possibly the first Tooth and Nail release. Um, so I, I don't know if there's any truth to that or not. It uh, could possibly be an old wives' tale, um, especially with this saying the copyright of 94 because Tooth and Nail started in 93. But I do know this is the first Starfire release that this came out. Now here's the back, and of course here's the front, and um, as all 45s are, it's extremely thin, almost paper thin. Um, I'm not a fan of 45s at all. I'm just, I'm just not the biggest fan. Um, but it looks to be in okay shape, so that's cool. Um, let's take a look at the inside of this slip. Okay, so there's the uh, the inside. Um, is there some typing here? Tooth and L sound recordings. Tooth and L fine sound recordings. That's all it says there. Over here is the address. Okay. Hmm. Uh, uh, this says it's Tooth and L Vinyl Society number one. I remember looking at uh, an old old advertisement that um, there was going to be a monthly subscription. Um, a club that you could join and um, every month you would get a, a, a new record or some sort and the drop was supposed to be the first one on that list and I'm not even sure if this is sold individually or not I'm, I'm really not sure as far as that goes so I first got into Tooth and Nail Records in 1995 and I know I've told this story a thousand times and in the, uh, uh, the first album I got was MXPX on the cover. And in it uh, came this nice catalog of extra stuff you can get. So on the uh, Starflyer page, it um, just uh, shows the releases that Starflyer made and how much they are. Um, so you can order additional content. Um, which that's all fine and good. And then the fall of 96, they released this catalog, a much more robust catalog. And in this catalog, they have a page for all the seven inch records. And as we look here, um, you can see that the, the drop here shows that it's um, out of print. And so this catalog was my very first introduction to the concept of something being out of print. I was like, what's that mean? I, I never heard of the term out of print or what it meant. Um, luckily we had the internet, so I did some uh, quick research and uh, found out that it meant that it's no longer available to purchase. Um, they did a, a one print run, and once it sold out, it sold out, it's gone. So it's no longer available. And I got this catalog, um, had it been like February, March of 97 when I got this catalog and I saw that. So um, ever since February, March of 97, I've always kind of pined for it because it wasn't available. It's, it's that thing that you want what you can't have. Well, I couldn't have it. It's out of print. I can't get it now. So I, I've always pined for it. And then I um, uh, got the uh, the Starflyer 59 box set from uh, 1999 or 2000. I can't remember when they released it. Anyway, there was a, a story in there, an essay, if you will, by uh, J. Edward Keys. And he mentioned the fact that uh, he got the drop off eBay 
in the late 90s, and he paid $75 for it. Um, and we're talking, this is a total of what, like seven, eight minutes music? And he paid uh, $75 for it. Ever since then, basically, it's just, as far as I've been concerned, just in the back of my mind, because I just never felt comfortable spending that kind of money uh, on a record when I was in high school anyway. And then went through college, you know, being broke, and then got married, and it's just never been on the forefront. And so I've been assessing my Starfire collection, and I uh, took notice that I have every single 12-inch vinyl that they've released, every single cassette that they've released, every single compact disc that they've released, even the mail-in exclusives, even the demo discs, um, everything, uh, the show exclusives, everything. Um, I have all the seven inches that they've released. I was missing one piece of the entire collection of Starfire 59, and that was the drop. And uh, so um, the other day, um, Mike Pierce from Huntington's, um, the drummer for Huntington's, he posted a picture that he found his Starfire 59, the drop. So I sent him a, a private message, and I said... Um, I'll offer you X amount of money. Um, we discussed some things and we came to a uh, agreement. And so I PayPal'd him the money and um, he sent that. So yeah, all around, it was a, a fantastic deal that is um, uh, just uh, really great to finally close this chapter in life. You know, 22, 23 years now, I've been collecting uh, albums by this artist and now I can finally close the collection. And there's rumor and speculation that uh, Young in My Head could possibly be the very last Starfire uh, release ever. So if that is the last Starfire release ever, it's just interesting to be able to finally put a bow on that entire career and um, you know the discography, the, the overall catalog that is Starfire 59 and Jason Martin. We finally have the drop the most sought after Starflyer album in my collection. Some would say it's the most sought after Starflyer uh, album, even though um, gold on vinyl, shoot, is going for like $200. And that's another thing that uh, I was kind of hesitant on getting the drop is because the drop commanded more than retail price. And every other piece of my Starflyer collection is at retail price. I've never paid secondhand or bought a used piece for my Starflyer collection. So I was always hesitant to go and get this because it was already out of print when I started getting Starfire albums. So the only thing you can do is buy it off the secondhand market. And you're basically uh, up against the uh, supply and demand factor of cost. So, all right. So uh, we finally have the Starfire 59 collection complete. And I'm a happy clam. And uh, thanks for watching. Peace out.